we knew already, you know, they started to take people to, we didn't know where they were taking him, but they were picked up and most of my friends, parents' friends were gone, a lot of my friends were gone and things were really, really, really bad. And, <clears throat> but my father, due to that he was in, in that circle, you know, he knew a lot of judges and he used to still go in town and he wouldn't go to court anymore, but he was still in contact with it. We still had a telephone and they told him that as far as they know, we'll be taking around March, that they knew that. But prior to that, they also came to us and they said, since my father is disabled from the First World War and he was a captain in the army, if we had enough money, we could buy ourselves into a camp which is called Theresienstadt, which was in Czechoslovakia. We had heard of that before already, but as far as we knew, none of the German Jews had ever gone there. It was also the, always the Czech Jews who went there. And so they came to my father, and my father said, yes, how much is it? No, it didn't matter how much it was, because they were going to take our money anyhow. And I don't know what, what he had to pay, but he paid, and he said, well, we'll see what we can do that we will be able to take you there. And that must have been a couple of months prior to that. And then uh, a couple of days before my father was have gotten a phone call, or somebody came to tell him that they're going to come within the next couple of days. So we were kind of all prepared. We had our little knapsack already packed and when we when they knocked on the door it was about one, two o'clock in the morning and of course not being very friendly and schnell, schnell, raus, raus, uh, hurry up and get out of here and take what you can take what you can wear. But we had that all laid out already and it was cold and we had a knapsack. And uh, so we walked out of our house, and our mate was still there, and they threw her out of the house after a while, and they were absolutely horrible. They treated her worse than they treated us for her being with us, you know. She was not Jewish, of course. And they took us into the um, courtyard from the old synagogue. That was the only synagogue which was still being used. It was a great big courtyard, and when we got there, there were uh, hundreds of people in there. And because of all this going on, my father got sick about four or five days prior to that. It was a very, very high fever, very, very high fever. And we had the doctor there, and he said, well, there's very little they can do. At this point, I never did mention one thing which I just thought of. My father also had, in 1933, a catastrophe happening to him. He was in a courtyard, courtroom and was ready to walk out, and they called him. And as they called him back, he had to go and sign another paper. So they made him sit down. Sorry about that. That's it. They made him sit down on the chair, and the front legs broke off the chair and he broke his back. And he was, I never thought of that. He was from 1934 till 1937, almost for three years, permanently in the hospital, and they did not think that he would ever walk. But uh, my father was the kind of guy who, thank God, got up and walked, but of course very, very poor, very, very poor. He was in extreme poor health. He still tried to work a little bit, but was in very, very, very poor health. And so when they took him, uh, we didn't think that he was going to make it because he was really terrible. So they took you to the courtyard? Yeah, and he okay. was. they made him lay down and they kind of looked after him, but the medication they didn't... I don't think they gave him anything. We weren't together with them. The men were one side and the women were... Is this were. after you got to the camp or before? No, no, no. This was while we were assembled, getting ready to go. <coughs> I don't know what they were waiting for, but there were an awful lot. We were in that courtyard, and it was bitter, bitter cold for days. And then they finally came and took us and marched us to the railroad. And, and we went, of course, in uh, cattle cars. 
and no men and women together. I was with him. We didn't see my father anymore. We didn't even know what was going to happen to him or if he was going to make it. And they took us into the cattle car, and there were, um, I don't know, about 30, maybe 30, maybe 40 people, women in there. And with a bucket in the middle, and no food, no drink, no nothing. And they locked the doors, sh pushed us in, just like cattle. I mean, we were treated exactly. The cattle, I think, were treated better in there. And oh, my mother was completely. And um, we rode and we rode and we rode from where we were knowing if we were going to go to where they said they were going to take us to Theresien said that shouldn't have taken more than a couple hours but we were for days riding around so I don't know what they done we didn't get any food no water some people were already half dead in, in, in our compartment and uh, it was terrible my mother refused to go on the bucket because she was that kind of a person and it was Horrible. Well, when we finally arrived in Theresienstadt, which it was Theresienstadt, they opened up the doors, and first time we seen daylight. That's a terrible feeling after being in the dark for so long. And they made us get out, and there were Czechs, Czech soldiers there with the Germans, with the Gestapo, but mainly once we got inside, it was Czechs. And they made us line up and told us whatever we have on our back just to drop it because that wasn't going to be ours anymore and uh, counted us out and then assigned us to a barrack but we had no idea what happened to my father and all of a sudden they brought a whole lot of men in there and lo and behold here my father was laying on the floor th three quarters dead when the last time we seen him and there he was standing up holding his two canes, and that's how my father was, you know, he put him down and he always, like a yo-yo, he always jumped up again. And of course we were, my mother was terribly disturbed because we were not together. So anyhow, we lived in a barrack and my father lived somewhere else, but we could go and see him.